I'm Professor Daniel Balti. I'm a physicist at the University of Oxford, and for 15 years I've been working and playing with MRI scanners. Over the last century, great leaps in technology have led to astounding medical breakthroughs, and the pace of innovation is getting quicker. So in this series, I'm getting out of my lab to explore the fascinating science and history behind some of the most important and revolutionary incredible medical machines. Since the discovery of the penetrating powers of X-rays over 120 years ago, we've been able to see inside the body without having to make a single cut. What's more, we now have a whole host of tools at our disposal to diagnose all kinds of medical conditions. We're here at the FEMREB Centre at the University of Oxford, where we have a three Tesla MRI scanner that we use for research purposes. And this is my baby, this is my medical machine that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. So come with me and you'll see my favourite medical machine. These high-resolution MRI scans are amazing, but I'm here today to use the MRI in an entirely new way, all with a machine that's essentially just a giant magnet. Unlike having an X-ray or a CT, an MRI uses an enormous magnetic field. It's a really, really powerful field. To give you an idea, if you've ever seen the big magnets that they use in car yards to pick up car bodies, they're about one Tesla. This is three times the strength of that, so you could very easily pick up a small truck. I started playing with magnets as a child and it's one of the first aspects of physics and science that you come across and you, I just desperately wanted to know how does that work and that's what really appeals to me about physics and science in general is that I just really love knowing how stuff works and once you have a magnet that's this big it's brilliant fun. Electricity and magnetism are intrinsically linked, you can't have one without the other. And when you have electricity and magnetism, you also then have a force or a movement. And they're related with what we call the right hand rule. And it's, it's nice and simple to look at that if my thumb was a piece of wire and I had an electric current running through it, you then got magnetic field, which is perpendicular to that wire. And then you have a direction of force, which is the direction that I would push with my hand. And so if you can imagine, we've got field lines running from the north and the south pole of this magnet. And if we run an electric current through a coil of wire, if the current is running in, running in one direction, we'll have a force on that wire that would be pushing up. And if we put the current in the other direction, it would be a force that will be pushing down. And if we just put an alternating, like a sine wave of current through that wire, what you'll see is the wire will move up and down. And then if we put a cane of paper on it, what we'll have created is a loudspeaker. It's effectively like a big bell and the forces make it ring. The first thing that you might notice when you walk into an MRI suite is that you can hear this strange squeaking pumping noise. That's actually the refrigeration unit. Because an MRI scanner works with a superconductor, it needs to keep the coil of wire beneath its critical temperature. And in this case, that's minus 270 degrees, which is about as cold as the dark side of the moon. It's as cold as we can get. And contrary to what Hollywood would have you believe, so long as this superconductor stays cold, the magnet is always on. So just to give you an idea of how strong the magnetic field is, I'm going to show you something that you should never do. I would say don't try this at home, but I think it's pretty unlikely that you've got one of these at home. So don't try this next time you're having an MRI scan. So I have a belt. It's a fairly ordinary belt. And as you can see, it's got a metal buckle on the end of it. And there's pretty much no force here. And this is what can make an MRI scanner quite dangerous, is that you'd think you'd suddenly go, oh, there's, there's a force. But there's no force. There's still no force and you can get quite close to the scanner and there's no force and then suddenly you go hang on something strange going on there and then suddenly i have to brace myself to hold it it's really got quite a lot of force there and it happens very very quickly it's only a couple of inches and you go from absolutely nothing to pulling it into the magnet the force from the magnet is so strong that it's easily enough to lift two kilograms of water supported only by the belt. And there we go. <clears throat> easily lifting two kilos. And almost me along with it. Yeah, so that's why it's really important. Make sure you take your belt off before you go into the scanner. It's also then easy to see how anything metal near the scanner can become a dangerous, even fatal projectile. As these videos I made demonstrate, and now it's time for me to go in. Earplugs are a must. This loudspeaker's noise level can reach 110 decibels, much louder than standing right next to the speakers at a heavy metal gig. Can you tell when it feels 
feels like to be inside the MRI scanner? I actually find it quite comfortable. It's quite close, but it's kind of cosy. And it's very loud, but it's just like listening to bad techno music. And then it's back to the control room to view the results. These images are going to form the building blocks for a 3D model of my own brain. This is a, a slice straight through, and you can actually see my eyes, and you can see the muscles that control my eyes pulling on either side of it. And through the center, you can see the optic nerve, which then goes right the way through to the back of my brain, where we've got the visual area of the brain. And you can see the lens at the front of the eye as well. And then as we scroll through the slices of my brain, you can start seeing some really big blood vessels and get up into the proper part of the brain and you can see the white matter which is kind of all the little connecting fibers that joins it all together and then you've got the gray matter which is where the interesting stuff happens well maybe in some people's brains but how do magnets enable us to see inside the human body unlike an x-ray which is basically looking at the absorption properties so whether or not it's transparent or opaque the signal that we're getting is actually coming from water and more specifically, it's coming from the hydrogen atoms in water, and more, more, more specifically, it's coming from the proton, which is the nucleus of the hydrogen atom in water. And we have very little water in our bones. Most of the water is in the tissue and the skin, and even in the fat. And so we get lots and lots of signal from the soft bits, but unlike x-ray, we get little or no signal from the bone. And so that always shows up as black in the images. The other advantage of using MRI over x-ray is that it doesn't use dangerous radiation. And now the results. I'm Michiel Klein-Einhuis. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at FIMRIP. And what I do is I try to develop new methods to analyze MRI images. Michiel has taken the slices of my brain and with pioneering CGI, turned them into a dynamic 3D model of my head. To create animations, I developed a add-on to this software that uh, takes brain images and that uh, creates 3D renderings of them. Now we can have a look inside this brain. There we go. So what we see here is uh, the white matter on the inside and the gray matter on the outside. So I'm gonna set up an animation now and this animation is going to turn the camera 360 degrees around Daniel's head and at the same time slice through his brain. The fact that we can quickly and safely diagnose a huge variety of diseases by essentially looking for water with magnets is what makes MRI such a crucial part of the medical arsenal. There's a lot of physicists working in this field who come up with smarter and smarter methods to acquire these images and to analyze them. If you can see smaller details in, our, uh, in the MRI scans, uh, you can identify abnormalities sooner as compared to five or 10 years ago. Because this technology is so flexible and adaptable, for the future, the sky really is the limit. In the next episode, I'll be meeting some mannequins that can do much more the model the latest fashions. That was intense. <laughs> <laughs>